Long time viewers of my channel probably know that when it comes to bolts and screws, 9 times out of 10, I'll buy them rather than make them here in the workshop. Not only is it easier for me to do that, store bought bolts can come with a hex socket and up until now that's not something that I could make here in the workshop. However seeing that this is a video now, you can probably bet that by the end of the video I will be able to machine hex sockets. The tool that I'm aiming to make in this video to be able to cut those sockets is a rotary brooch and some brooch cutters. You can buy them online, but the quality ones are just outside of my price range, same for the cutters. So for that reason, I've decided to make it myself, or at least I'll try to. Now in a conventional setup, you would mount it in a tailstock, which would also allow you to mount it in a mill spindle if you need to do that. However, I didn't have any stock in the right size, so I chose a different approach. Instead, I'll be making a tool post mounted one. I had some leftover 25 by 50 steel bar from the last set of quick change tool holders that I made for the lathe. I'll mark out a section and I'll cut it off. At this point I should mention, if it wasn't already clear, this isn't a tool which I've had any experience with, so getting it right will be a bit of trial and error, but thankfully it shouldn't be too complicated. With the part cut off, I'll pop it in the mill and clean it up with the fly cutter. I'll quickly do all the other faces to get rid of that mill scale. Now at this point I had to choose whether to use bronze or ball bearings in this setup. I'll be machining a shaft and it needs to be able to rotate freely in this housing. Having searched around online, I saw one or two examples where a free running fit actually sufficed in place of bearings, so I decided to try that to see if it would work. I drilled a hole through the tool holder to 12.5mm. I then finished it up with a half inch reamer. Now this is the first reamer that I've ever bought and I needed it for an unrelated project. Now this reamer is import and the finish leaves a lot to be desired, but the fit between some half inch brass and the hole gave me a lot of hope that this setup would work. Now to hold the cutters in, I'll be doing things a little bit different to conventional cutters. I'll be making use of my Rome key chuck that has a 3 8 24 TPI thread. I'll start by cutting off the shaft with a hacksaw. Next I'll swap out the scroll chuck for a collet chuck to get better run out. I'll clean up the end and turn it down to the major diameter that I'm aiming for. Next I'll swap out the change gears which I need to cut a 24 TPI thread. That's something that I did in a previous video because this is a metric lathe and you do need an odd set of change gears to cut those imperial threads.
With that done, the next thing I need to make is a backstop. Pretty much something for the shaft to push up against as it pushes its way into the work. In this video, the recreational machinist uses a ball bearing, however all I had on hand was a broken 1 8 inch end mill shank. I'll turn up a brass holder which will get pressed into the back of the tool holder. I'll drill a slightly undersized hole for the end mill so I can then press it in. I'll chuck up the end mill shank and I'll dome over the end using some abrasive paper. And I'll polish it up using some 1200 grit. And I'll set it aside for the moment. Next, I'll drill a hole in the tool holder. It'll be for an M6 screw, which will help retain the shaft when I pull the brooch out of the work. I'll also drill a second hole, undersized, for a press fit button oiler. Next, I'll chuck up a cap head screw and I'll use a form tool to form a dome on the end. Back on the shaft, I'll cut a groove for the cap head screw ball to go. Finally, I'll cut the dovetail. With the flood coolant set up, this makes it a lot easier and a lot faster since I can do it with a full depth of cut using 12mm wide end mills without any troubles. With that done, I'll assemble it. The first thing I did was glue the back pin in place. Then I screwed on the Jacobs chuck. The final thing left to do was put the shaft into the housing. Now at this point, I was pretty sure that I'd made a mistake Choosing not to use ball bearings, it just wasn't as free moving as I'd hoped. However, having come this far, I decided to press on before changing it, just in case that this setup might work. Next, I needed to make some cutters. The commercial ones are pretty expensive for what they are, and I didn't have any silver steel on hand, so I had to get creative. As an experiment, I tried to go with an existing Allen key. This one here is made from a carbon steel, so it can be heat treated. I cut off one end using an angle grinder, and I put it in the dividing head. The dividing head is facing down at a 3 degree incline. I'll use a carbide end mill to mill the hard steel. Now doing this will create the relief angles that I need for cutting. Now it's important to note that hex sockets are made slightly oversized, so this 8mm hex key won't be able to make an 8mm socket. Rather, I'm going to take it down to about 6.1mm between flats, and this will be able to make a 6mm hex socket. I'll mount a Dremel grindstone in the lathe, and I'll use it to grind in a concave bottom to the cutter. This should make the cutting geometry a lot sharper, and thus making it cut a lot easier. 
Finally, I'll heat the part to red and I'll quench it and then temper it. This should harden the cutting edges. Now before I used the cutter, I decided to quickly change the design of the shaft. I just wasn't happy with the action and I decided to go with ball bearings. And given what I know now, ball bearings could have been the way to go from the very start. I'll modify the housing in the four jaw chuck and then I'll modify the shaft to fit the new bearings. With that done, I'll now chuck up the rotary brooch cutter in the chuck and I'll get ready to cut a hex socket. I'll drill and then countersink a 6mm hole in order to cut this 6mm hex socket. The hexagon is 6mm between flats, but remember it's almost 7mm between diagonals. Now to make this work, the brooch needs to be kicked off at a 1 degree angle, not parallel to the centre line of the spindle. It's this offset angle which allows it to work. Now I did the first test in acetal, since it's pretty easy to machine, and I like machining acetal. Now the results may be difficult to see, but there is certainly a hex in there. It's a little bit oversized for what I want, but I can always make the cutter a little bit smaller. Now plastic is pretty easy. The real test is going to be in metal, and unfortunately this unknown carbon steel just wasn't able to cut it in brass. I tried doing this a few times, but each time the cutting edge dulled and just rolled over. Now I don't have any heat treatable tool steel on hand, but what I do have are some broken high speed steel end mills. Now I won't be able to heat treat them, but I know from experience that these shanks can be used as effective cutting tools for medium volume work. I'll use the carbide tool to turn down the outside of the shank on the lathe, since these are a little bit big for what I want. I'll then use a carbide end mill to cut in the hex shape. And a quick go on the diamond stone gets the edge really sharp. And thankfully the tool is starting to make way in the brass. In fact it's cutting a lot better than before, and it was cutting a lot faster too. And that looks really nice. The real test however is cutting in steel. I have a piece of cold rolled steel, which is certainly not the softest stuff that I have in the workshop. This time I used a lot of cutting oil to help it cut. Now I do suspect that I am running the lathe a little bit fast for this, but so far it's working really well. The hex looks really nice and it fits really well. Maybe I could go a little bit tighter, but so far I'm really happy with this. Overall, I'm really happy with the project and how it turned out. At times, I was quite doubtful as to whether this would work since I'd never made this tool before, and I did run into quite a few problems trying to get this to work. It took a few revisions over the course of a few weeks, but I'm glad I got it working. Now this probably won't be the final tool, this has been modified a few times, I'll probably make it again just with some slightly better cut bearing seats, and I might make the shaft from steel, I'm very happy with this type of design. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, see you next time.